Well, you guys got another video on how to save your old PC or laptop when Windows 10 ends. Now, I have an old ThinkPad here, and this ThinkPad works perfectly fine. It's in very, very good condition, just needs a bit of a dust off. And uh, again, it's in pretty decent nick. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upgrade this, uh, put a new uh, NVMe drive in here, and possibly add some more memory to it, and then reinstall a different operating system on here. We're going to go for Linux on this one. Now, this has the Intel i5-6500, and this has four cores, four threads, running at a maximum uh, frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. So this is going to be plenty enough for Linux. And unfortunately, because Windows 10 is coming to the end of life, uh, I can either extend this or I can upgrade it and put Linux on it. Now, I've never upgraded this laptop. I just pulled it out of the cabinet at work, which was uh, due to be skipped. And we basically uh, are just showing you what you can do if you have an old laptop or an old PC. So you can see here, we've got the memory module here. Some of these models didn't come with memory modules. They come with onboard memory, but this one does have one stick of memory that I can upgrade. Maximum 16 gigabytes can go into this system. It does have eight gigabytes in here because I've already upgraded to eight gigabytes. So what I'll do is I'll order a stick of 16 gigabytes and that will give it a bit more memory, uh, but eight gigs should be good enough so far. The batteries right here can be replaced. It's in pretty good working order. The drive only has a 256 gigabyte uh, drive in here, but we're going to change this for a one terabyte drive to give it a bit more storage. We're going to use something like this. Now, the important part with these particular laptops, which is the ThinkPad uh, Yoga 260, you have to make sure that it does have the flat back on it. If it has the flat back, it will fit in that slot. So make sure it doesn't have chips on both sides. Otherwise, it's not going to fit and the back of the um, case won't go back onto the laptop so bear that in mind you can clean all the fan out here I'll give this a little brush out uh, once I've finished we've got the Wi-Fi card here and the WAN card uh, next to that as well and the CMOS batteries there you can see that so let me go ahead and unscrew uh, this drive here now I haven't got the memory to hand but I will order that and I'll upgrade that but you can see it right there it's quite straightforward you just clip that out and upgrade the memory to a maximum of 16 gigabytes for this particular model of laptop and that should be plenty, even eight gigabytes should be plenty for Linux. So why not go for LTSE, you might be wondering. Well, LTSE, like I keep telling people, you are going to run into issues. If you have Windows 10, IoT, LTSE, those versions are going to have software issues uh, in a year's time. You're going to start having browsers not being able to install on there before uh, anyone starts jumping in the comments saying you don't know what you're talking about. It's because they're not designed for desktop use, uh, designed for office use, for having some sort of uh, like scanner or something like that or display screen in hospitals and things like that. That's what that operating system's for. So they have no reason to install software. But as a desktop PC, you're going to be installing all sorts of software on there. And again, once that uh, year goes by, you've got to go for another eight years on that particular operating system. It's just not going to work. On 21H2, which is already at end of life now for desktop use. So you can imagine when you try to install stuff in a year's time, it's not going to work. That is the reason why we're going down the Linux route here. But it's important to know that you can always head over to the manufacturer's website and check for all of the drivers that you can get here for Linux and for Windows. If there's any for Linux, you can get them here. And if it's just for Windows and you're staying on Windows and you want to put an LTSE version on there, IoT, LTSE, whatever it is you want to do, you can download all your drivers and make sure you've got all the latest drivers. You might want to flash that BIOS as well and get everything updated. Now, I'm going to be going for Exabuntu here uh, because of this has a 12 point something inch screen on it, touch screen. So I'm going to go with this model right here. I'm going to download this and get it onto my Ventoy USB flash drive and boot to it. And we'll go ahead and install it onto this laptop. And this should give this laptop a new lease of life. And I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find someone who can put this to good use. So I've booted up to my Ventoy drive here. I'm just going to come down until I can find a Linux distro that I want to install, which is uh, Exubuntu here. Uh, you can see Zorin OS on there. That would be another great choice or Linux Mint, another great option available uh, on here as well. So let me come down to boot to uh, a Rob2 and uh, we'll go ahead 
and boot to that. And now we can try or install X Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and boot to our live environment where we can click on the install to install it onto our system. So once that's booted up, you should see something looking like this on the screen. And there we go. We are now in the live environment. And what I can do now is click on that install icon, which is blue there, and go ahead and install it on the laptop for the very first time. So let me go ahead and click on this right here. And I'll walk you through the steps just in case you have an old laptop or something like that that you want to give a new lease of life to rather than throwing it away into e-waste. You can use it uh, with Linux on it and it should be perfectly fine. Whatever version of Linux you choose is entirely up to you. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a ton of Linux users in the comment section saying, oh, you should have installed this version. You should have installed that version, whatever. It's your laptop. You install what you like. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose our language for our keyboard here. And uh, what we're going to do is click next once I click on it. Now I'm using a little Sensi pad, touchpad here on the laptop. Uh, it's a bit uh, janky. I just don't like using those. I prefer to use a mouse itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these and uh, we can go next. And now I need to connect to my Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to a Wi-Fi and let it scan for the Wi-Fi. Now, if you're going to be upgrading the Wi-Fi card on these, it has to be identical to what's in there. I do believe that uh, Lenovo, the Yoga 260, doesn't like to have upgraded Wi-Fi cards. I could be wrong. If that is the truth and you can upgrade it, let me know in the comment section because I do want to upgrade the Wi-Fi card on this particular machine. So I'm going to choose the Wi-Fi connection here, put the password in and click connect. And once we do this, we should be able to connect to our Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi works perfectly fine on this system, but I would like to try to upgrade it as much as I can for the next person so they have a decent Wi-Fi card in there, the maximum memory in here, and one terabyte of uh, NVMe storage on there. So next, we're going to go ahead and do uh, interactive installation right here. So let's go ahead and do that and select that and click next, and we can go on to the next step. Now, of course, if you've never used Linux before, it's not as difficult as people make out. It really is simple to install and get up and running. So what we're going to do here is choose whether you want minimal installation or if you want the desktop version with all of the stuff added in. I'm just going to go for the desktop version right here, but you can have a bare bones minimal installation if you want to. I am going to check mark these two right here, and these are for installing third-party software and graphics on Wi-Fi, hardware drivers, and also it's going to download and install support for additional stuff here as well. Next, we can erase the disk and install X Ubuntu here. You can go to the advanced features if you want to and select uh, whatever you want here, whether you want to do some sort of encryption on there. You can leave it on none if you wish, which I would do normally. But again, I will just probably use this LVM one here just to show you, uh, but I'd normally leave it on none. But you want to go for uh, none of the experimental ones. Leave those off because obviously they are experimental and you don't want to be doing that on your system. So let's go ahead and click OK here. And you can leave it as none, if, if, like I said, and then click Next. And it will go ahead and start to install Ubuntu onto the system. First of all, we just need to select here and click Next. This is our drive. And now we can put in all of our username that we want to use. I'm just going to put admin on here like so. And we can now put a password in. Again, you can put in a strong password if you want to, uh, or you can just put in a simple password, depending on what you want to do here. But I'm just going to go ahead and put a simple password in, something that I remember. And then all you need to do then, once you've got those in, click Next, and then choose your location. I'm in London, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that right here. And now these are the summary of all the choices that we made during the setup and installation part here. So now we can click install and it's going to use all of those settings that we chose there. And that's it. It's going to say welcome to Xubuntu here. It's going to go ahead and install this. It will take a bit of time depending on how fast your laptop or PC is. So just be patient, sit back and let it do its thing. And once that's done, it will tell you that the system needs to be restarted. And once we restart, we can then pull the uh, USB flash drive out and then boot up to the desktop for the very first time. So we're just going to let this finish off. And once this is done, we'll probably get the message saying restart your PC. Now, I'm pretty sure if you've never installed Linux before, that is pretty easy for anyone that to install. 
you need to do is create yourself a bootable uh, USB flash drive with Linux on it or use Ventoy and drop it on and away you go. So let's see if the touch pen works here. So the touch pen does actually work, which I'm pretty surprised on. So that's a good thing. So that all works. So we've got everything working here because this does work as a tablet as well as a PC. So, so we can touch on this. Works lovely. They can glide up and down here. Very nice. I like that. And again, it all seems to be working out of the box. So all you need to do now is do some updates and start using your computer. You've got yourself a new lease of life. You will still receive all the security updates uh, for this version of laptop on Linux. And rather than throw the old laptop out or old PC out, you can give it a new lease of life by installing whatever version of Linux you want onto your laptop or PC. You can see it's working perfectly fine here. I'll give this a quick cleanup and this will be very serviceable for someone it is a very nice laptop these still sell for quite a lot of money these thinkpads and i've got quite a few of them so if you've got an old pc or an old laptop and you're not too sure whether to install linux it is pretty straightforward there's quite a few different versions of it and uh, choose uh, whatever flavor you want and go and install it onto your pc or laptop now if you ask some questions in the comments section down below there might be some decent linux users out there that will give you some reasonable answers rather than saying just install linux it doesn't help anyone there's a lot of people in a really tough spot right now and they don't know what to do but this is a definite option for you anyway just a quick video for today my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you enjoyed the video and hope it's been helpful just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members i do appreciate the support i shall catch you in the next video have a lovely weekend or i'll see you on a discord server bye for now Thank you.